I'm standing outside the Hong Kong government headquarters on Tuesday night, the eve of the founding of the People's Republic of China. Two days ago in this very spot, Hong Kong police used pepper spray and tear gas on their own citizens to try and stop a protest against the Chinese government that has been growing in recent days. This area was completely closed off on Sunday night as tensions rose. Today, the police have retreated, it's completely free, and people are gathering for what's expected to be one of the largest protests in Hong Kong's history tomorrow on National Day. But it's not just Occupy Central, who have been talking about blocking part of Hong Kong for months, or the students who started this protest in earnest on Friday when they stormed government headquarters. This has become a much wider phenomenon. Uh, this is uh, the car that uh, our school student write something on it is for supporting uh, this uh, this function or support uh, to fight for democracy. All of this car is for it's for one to form six students write write this car and then I come here and then put on it. Some of the leaders here today are saying this is now Democracy Square. This is a chance for Hong Kong people to say to the government of Hong Kong and the Chinese Communist Party in Beijing that they want democracy, they want to choose their own leader. Well, I am a uh, professor of the uh, Mathematics Department of Hong Kong University. So what I talk about is related to the so-called dictator's game, which is a famous um, uh, uh, experiment in uh, behavioral uh, economics. So while worldwide people playing this game, the so-called dictator will give about 20% to the, uh, uh, another player. But actually, uh, the People's Congress or the central government, what it uh, gives us is less than zero. But this protest is unlike many others that you see around the world. There's very little aggression, people are very, very peaceful, and many people are doing things like recycling their litter, picking up trash from the street, and even spraying people walking around with water to cool them down in the incredible heat as a thunderstorm starts to roll in. The crowds here range from little kids, the age of four and five, to older people in their 70s and 80s, and everyone in between. I just want him to know what is happening now and want to come to see the truth here and not in the TV. With the thunderclouds opening overhead, people are starting to take out umbrellas that several days ago they used to deflect the tear gas. Tonight, they're going to try and keep themselves dry as they prepare for a huge moment in Hong Kong's history tomorrow. But while the hundreds of thousands of people are going to come out on the streets, the big question is how the Hong Kong government, and more importantly Beijing, is going to try and disperse these crowds and get back to a normal situation in Hong Kong where it's business as usual. Dimitri Sevastopoulos, Financial Times, Hong Kong.